formulas in Excel. We've learned so far that there are three types of data in any spreadsheet, or there can be three types of data in any spreadsheet. Text entries, numbers, and now we're about ready to create a formula. All formulas in Excel start with an equal sign. We're going to create this formula rather slowly, building it and adding one cell reference at a time. And then later on, in another module, we will discuss various functions in Excel. I type in the equal sign, and then I'm going to click on my first uh, number in this list. When I click on that first number, you can see how A2 comes up as the cell reference. Let's say we're going to add. I find the plus sign, and then I click on the next cell reference that has a number in it, add, and then the last number. You can see how Excel is coming up also with range finder colors, so it makes it easier for the user to see what cell references are included in this formula. I'm going to simply press enter to accept the entry. And you can see how the answer in A5 is 525. Suppose I handed this off to an, a comrade of mine. And looking at the screen, they might look at A2 through to A5 and determine that those cells are numbers. But if we go to A5, we'll notice that the formula bar is telling us that this cell contains formula content. Indeed, any time we go to a cell reference, we will be able to see that type of data on our formula bar. So what you need to do, folks, is when you're looking at data on a spreadsheet, always go to the cell reference that you're examining and take a look at the formula bar to see what type of content is in that cell. Let's copy this formula. Bottom right hand corner, we'll put our mouse and on the autofill handle, when the mouse symbol becomes a black cross, I'm going to click and drag across. Notice that the formula's answer did not copy across, but the structure did. The structure to the formula now reads B2 plus B3 plus B4. In the first uh, cell, our source, it contained the A letters for the column indicator. And when we copied over one column, it increased the column indicator by one. If I created a formula like this, and I clicked on this cell reference, and then I added, let's say, this cell reference, pressed enter, you can see how I get this answer. Well, when I copy over, the A3 is going to change to a B3, and the B4 is going to change to a C4. If I copied this formula down from D3 to D4, it's taking A3 and adding 1 to its row indicator. So, of course, we've got A4. Then the B4 is going to increase by 1, because I'm going down one row, to a B5. And this is the answer I get. Back to this cell reference. We know this cell reference is a formula. And each one of these cell references inside of this cell contains um, information for Excel. So that when I click on, let's say, A4, which is part of the formula cell reference in A5, and I change the number to, let's say, 1110, you can certainly see how the answer changes. Suppose you accidentally type in some text in A4. Expect, of course, an error message. Because A4 does not contain data that is a number or a formula where the answer is a number, it cannot, of course, add text data to any formula. If you get a problem like this or an error like this, simply undo Control z so that it at least takes it back to the previous answer that didn't contain an, um, an error message. 